What's up everyone, it's Kadi with MoneyVest. So in this video, we are gonna be going over, of course, the entire market. We've got very, very important FOMC meeting tomorrow. So the Federal Reserve is going to be releasing the summary of economic projections. The press conference is gonna be at 2.30 p.m. Eastern. And of course, we're gonna learn more about their interest rate expectations and policy moving forward. I will be doing a couple of videos prior to the actual announcement of the, uh, of the interest rate policy as well. So hope you all enjoy this video. Inflation numbers came out today. Tomorrow, we've got inflation numbers for PPI. And of course, we've got Jerome Powell's speech and FOMC meeting as well. Um, but today we did have the CPI numbers, which we are going to break down in this video. As always, if you enjoyed, find it helpful, make sure that you drop a like. I would really appreciate you guys subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. And links to our Discord and Patreon is going to be down below if you want to join. And of course, be a part of our MoneyVest community. You get access to all the members-only videos, 40-plus lectures and tutorials, along with Excel spreadsheets, uh, intrinsic values, fair values, volatility spreadsheets, portfolio updates. Everything is going to be included, as well as the 20-plus Discord channels that you can unlock and get access to all the trade alerts, straight ideas. Everything is going to be included with the link down below as well. And also do check out the courses, fundamentals, technicals, options, and psychology. Lifetime access to these courses with over 130-plus lectures and of course, tutorials related to educational videos on uh, fundamental analysis, technicals, trading options, and psychology as well. And do connect with me on Instagram. My handle is going to be CassWRP. I do post a lot of interesting stories and, and updates and polls and strategies over there as well. So markets on the day, NASDAQ pushing up 70 basis points. We did have the S&P up 45, 46 basis points, getting up to over 46.50. And the Dow Jones also rallying to over 36,500 up almost half a percent on the day. This right here was the inflation numbers that came out earlier today, which again, we had a longer live stream to break these numbers down, but basically we came in a little bit hotter than what the expectations were on a CPI headline month over month basis, coming in at 0.1% increase and year over year coming in at 3.1%, which obviously was in line with the consensus. X food and energy, which is again, core inflation, uh, sitting at just around 0.3% month over month and 4% on a year over year basis. Again, in line with the consensus expectations for CPI as well. Uh, going over to, again, the overall trend for inflation. So this right here is the prices which are now on a, on a year over year. The rate of increase basis is coming down. So we've come down obviously from 8 over 9% to now sitting at 3 to 4%. That has been a significant decline in the rate of increase of prices. In other words, inflation has come down. However, the prices, the general prices of goods and services has continued to go up. In fact, core inflation, the price index for core inflation is at an all-time high. I think that's really what everyone needs to understand is that this chart and everything that we hear from media is definitely uh, not super accurate and what it definitely suggests is that rate of increase in prices is going down the prices themselves are not going down prices are going up it's the rate of increase that is now de declining and decreasing over time so this right here is every single line item so we did have medical care services down over two percent year over year up 0.3 percent month over month we did have commodities new vehicles and more specifically used car prices uh in the month of October. So this actually is not accurate because it's showing for the month of October, but energy prices were down and even used car prices did actually tick back higher in the month of November. And, uh, and of course, shelter prices are really what's going to drive core inflation lower. Eventually shelter is what really matters at the end of the day, because it controls, or it basically has a very significant weighting of, of almost a third of inflation is kind of focused on shelter. And, uh, as a result, we are obviously seeing shelter prices continue to be a little bit more elevated. They haven't really been coming down. So the rate of uh, rate of increase, although is slowing down, but it's still not going down, right? In other words, it's not, there's no deflation. There's disinflation, but there's no deflation at the moment. This right here, of course, is going to be um, the overall expectations for interest rates. And we have seen four to five uh, potential cuts going into 2024, starting in May. So in May, 2024, all the way through December, 2024, the market's pricing in five rate cuts uh, down from 5.25, 5.5%, all the way down to as low as 4 to 4.25% uh, as well. So that's basically how many cuts the market is pricing in at the moment. 
So here's everything the Federal Reserve is, ex is expected to do on Wednesday. So again, tomorrow is the big meeting. Tomorrow is the big day. We've got the FOMC meeting. Uh, I will be live to cover both the report, the press conference, and the summary of economic projections. There's going to be a lot of things to really focus on. And the market, of course, has pretty much made themselves clear that they are expecting a pause from the Federal Reserve, not expecting a rate hike, and essentially the rates staying where they are. And uh, again, the market is pricing in for a target range between 5.25 to 5.5%. And then for instance, Bank of America thinks the committee might drop its reference to additional policy firming and simply that it is committed to getting inflation back down to 2%. And likewise, Goldman Sachs sees a possibility that the statement excludes characterization of regarding tighter financial conditions and possibly making a few other small changes that have been used to convey a bias towards rising interest rates as well. The dot plot is going to show us where policy members, FOMC members, expect the policy to be, interest rates to be over the long term, going into next year, 2025 and 2026, and longer term as well. And the economic outlook, of course, is going to be part of the overall summary of economic projections, as well as inflation and interest rate expectations. So all that we're going to discuss, and it's going to be broken down in our live stream. So definitely do join us tomorrow um, at around 2 p.m. Eastern, actually 1.45 p.m. Eastern, uh, 15, 20 minutes prior to the statement being released. And of course, the actual press conference at 2.30 p.m. Eastern. So we're going to be looking into that as well. So Meta, NVIDIA rallying a little bit back higher, over 2%. Google, Tesla were slightly down. Amazon, Apple, and Microsoft pushing higher. Energy was lower. So we did have a little bit of a, uh, of a sort of a mixed day in a sense that utilities, energy, healthcare, materials, comm services slightly were slightly down. Other sectors pushing higher. Oracle was down over 12% on the back of those earnings. I did a video on Oracle earlier in the week, so definitely do check that out if you haven't already. But in the last one day, of course, we did have utilities, energy, materials, real estate all underperforming and everything else pushing higher. In the last one week, energy has been the biggest uh, underperformer. And in the last one month also, energy has been the, the sector that's been selling off quite aggressively. It's down the most. This right here, coffee prices, lean hogs, cocoa, feeder cattle, everything pushing higher with soybean, natural gas, and orange juice pulling back. And Bitcoin's back over 41,000. It's been struggling a little bit. It's pulling back down. And Ether also back under 2,200 at the moment as well. So going back over to the market and crude oil prices continue to struggle and come down. So we're now under $69 a barrel. This right here is the overall downtrending channel within which it's been trading. And support level is going to stay, but at 66 close to 67 dollars a barrel so this right here is actually going to be that level to watch with a resistance of course inside this sort of red rectangle sitting roughly at around 72 to 73 74 dollars a barrel um, at the moment support level is going to stay about at 66 and if you do get a breakdown below this level of course 57 50 dollars is going to be that next level of support to watch for crude oil moving forward volatility on the other hand continues to drop further down it was down a little bit over four percent coming down to low 12s for the VIX and resistance, of course, we have talked about this. Uh, it's going to stay put inside this green rectangle. It's the exact opposite for volatility because the lower it gets, the more cautious we need to be. The higher it gets, the more aggressive we can be. You can start to kind of turn the dial to be more aggressive and start deploying cash when the volatility is well over 20, 30, 40, 50 levels. But right now, we're coming down to its lowest level um, in a very long time. This is a level that volatility has not yet seen since January of 2020. So it's been well over almost four years. The VIX has not really seen, uh, actually a little over, yeah, four years. We have not seen volatility as low as it is right now, which is quite crazy to think about. Any type of spike in the VIX, whether that's on the back of the FOMC meeting, interest rate expectations, policy uh, with, with respect to monetary policy, fiscal policy could result in the volatility spiking which is exactly why why we need to be a little bit more cautious on the long side moving forward. And that's, like I said in my live stream as well, um, volatility has been really, really low for longer periods of time compared to when it's higher. So in other words, the markets can remain overbought for longer than they can be oversold for longer, right? So overbought, in other words, they can continue to drift higher, they can continue to move up and stay overbought for a longer time compared to when they are oversold and volatility is high because that, buying window is much smaller compared to uh 
compared to the uh, other window, which we talk about when volatility is low and the market continues to be elevated, overbought, and extended to the upside. They can continue to drift higher uh, in that sense. Now, going over to cryptos, Ether is now starting to pull right back down under 2200 from that red rectangle. So we're starting to see a little bit of a pullback here. And Bitcoin also uh, just a little bit over 41,000. So it's starting to pull right back down from highs of 44, $45,000. So again, it was obviously a very, very overbought. So it's not a surprise that we're starting to see a bit of a profit taking, a bit of risk off uh, environments here in the market with, uh, with, of course, crypto starting to roll right back down. When it comes to the yields, uh, the short end of the curve continues to be up a little bit over 5, 5.4%. The long end of the curve continues to come down. The 10 year is now sitting at a little bit under uh, 10 year. Where is the 10 year? Uh, the 10 year is going to be, I think, a little bit over 4.2%. Last time I checked, uh, the 10 year is sitting at 4.193, so a little bit under 4.2%, uh, and it's slightly down about 24 basis points at the moment. And of course, right now we're starting to see a little bit of a pullback once again from highs of 4.25%. So this right here was a level that we talked about previous support, uh, previous resistance, then again acting as a resistance once again. And the next level is going to be closer to low fours for volatility. And I think this is a very, very important critical level. The moment the yields crack below 4%, um, that could lead to more potential downside for treasuries and uh, more upside for overall bonds. Now, going over to S&P 500 here, um, S&P 500, you'll notice, continues to kind of move forward at 4,600, continues to see very nice green days. Uh, and the next resistance and target is going to be at 4,727. That's pretty much the level that uh, we are watching on the S&P 500. RSI, once again, well over 73. And uh, the market continues to do incredibly well. I mean, we are just continuing to drift higher and higher and that this December seasonality may have something to do with it. And that's what I've mentioned in my previous videos is that December seasonality is so strong that it's very possible that this month actually ends up being green because of the December seasonality. And we're already at 1.66%. The S&P is almost at an all-time high. It is absolutely crazy that we are less than 4% away from all-time highs on the S&P 500. Absolutely incredible. And for the NASDAQ, we're also almost at an all-time high. Uh, it is about 11.5% away, so a little bit under 12% away uh, from its all-time high. So th that just goes to show the S&P is definitely seeing a lot more momentum, a lot more broad-based participation more recently compared to the NASDAQ where S&P is now surprisingly only less than 4% away from its all-time highs. NASDAQ still has a little bit more ways to go, but uh, but that's pretty much going to be that next resistance uh, and target sitting roughly at around 4,800 to as much as 4,840 uh, on the S&P 500. So very, very nice move to the upside. The summer seasonality is coming in full swing at the moment. However, I do believe that going into the first few weeks of January going into 2024, I wouldn't be surprised if this momentum starts to fade a little bit and starts to pull back because that seasonality is going to be gone. Um, so there's going to be potentially some profit taking, some after the tax year profit taking. Um, and of course, the overbought levels, overextended levels finally catching up to the price action and the technicals that again are very overextended at the moment. So next resistance and target a little bit at 47 27 to as much as 48, 14. So those are there are going to be a couple levels to watch and a new support level at 4,600 uh, on the S&P 500. Now talking about uh, the NASDAQ here, also starting to see a very nice momentum and that breakout to the upside. Resistance is going to stay put at right here, 14,600. So this right here is going to be that level to watch with a support, uh, once again, sitting right over here uh, at around 14,400 um, on the NASDAQ as well. Talking about Apple and Apple here getting a bounce back higher from those levels down to 190 being a very strong support here. And of course, moving back up to that resistance at 196, 197 is going to be that resistance to watch for Apple. So that right there is going to be that level to watch and a support level sitting roughly at around 100, under $190 uh, per share. Amazon here, on the other hand, just consolidating sideways with a very nice move to the upside up a little bit over 1%. So resistance right now is going to stay put at 147, 148. So this is a level. And of course, we're seeing a lot of consolidation for Amazon right now. It's because it's been trading sideways in that range for such a long time. And of course, support level is going to stay put down to 135 to as low as 121 with the RSI and also the MACD showing some signs of a potential negative divergence that we're seeing at the moment. So resistance is going to stay put at close to $148 per share for Amazon. Uh, talking about Tesla and Tesla here on the day down a little bit over 1.14%. So 
uh, definitely struggling a little bit at the moment and continues to consolidate sideways. Very similar to what we have witnessed for Amazon as well. So Amazon also has been trading sideways. So this really has been the range within which it's been trading at the moment. So this right here is the upper range. This right here is going to be that lower range. And we have just been moving sideways between 237 and $240. Uh, there's also a lot of resistance here uh, and all the way up as much as 285 to $310 per share. And of course, this right here is the overall lower highs and lower lows for Tesla that it continues to validate um, at the moment. Uh, talking about Nvidia now, and Nvidia with a very nice move back higher, up a little bit over 2% on the day. So momentum is coming back in. This right here is the overall consolidation and the chart where it's been trading in that range between 400 to as much as $500. And that's pretty much been Nvidia's price action in a nutshell, where it really is just consolidating sideways um, in that range at the moment. Uh, talking about advanced micro devices and AMD here with yet another strong move to the upside, up a little bit over 2.3% on my AMD position. I'm up a little bit over 40% now. So again, if you want to get all these alerts and find out exactly what I'm buying and selling and trading in terms of options, uh, I started a position at AMD, uh, you know, pretty much in the 90s uh, a long time ago. And uh, this was a position that I wanted to restart because there was a lot of potential with advanced micro devices. And I'm actually buying more of Amazon, buying more of Realty Income Corp, buying more of VUG. So again, if you want to get access to all these alerts, link's going to be down below. We'd love to have you on board uh, as a MoneyVest member as well. Let me know if you have any questions, but AMD with a very strong breakout, very, very overbought at the moment, no doubt about that. Uh, so just got to be very careful with, with where we are with the RSI over 75. And the next price target and the level to watch is going to be 156 for advanced micro devices and support level is going to stay put down to $130 per share. Um, next one on the list is going to be Google. And uh, Google here just pulling back a little bit down about 70, 80 basis points. Lots of consolidation sideways. Resistance is going to stay put at 139, close to $144 per share with the support level staying put at close to $126. And we're seeing a lot of consolidation in between that range for Google. Talking about PayPal and PayPal here also slightly down about 25 basis points. So not a lot of momentum here, just consolidating sideways for the most part, but still trading within the context of a higher high and higher low pattern. And of course, that next resistance is going to be all the way up to $65 per share with a support level staying put at roughly around $56 um, at the moment for uh, for PayPal. Talking about Visa and Visa here continues to move higher with a very nice breakout from a potential bull flag breakout here. So lots of consolidation sideways. This right here was the entire move up. And now we're starting to see a little bit of that momentum back higher for Visa up a little bit over 1%, just under $260 per share at the moment. So very, very nice move uh, to the upside for, for Visa. Uh, talking about Meta platforms and Meta here also pushing higher from that support that we talked about inside this green rectangle sitting roughly at 315 to $320 per share. A little bit of that higher high and higher low pattern. So very nice uptrend for uh, for Meta. So this right here has been the overall uptrend. Next resistance is gonna be $352 with a very nice support sitting inside this green rectangle in the 315 to $320, all the way down to as low as $275 per share for Meta moving forward. Uh, and then finally talking about Netflix and Netflix here, uh, slightly up over 68 basis points. Lots of consolidation, seen a little bit of a pullback after being very, very overbought and overextended. So Netflix did drop over seven and a half, close to 8%. Support level is going to stay put right over here for Netflix. Resistance is going to stay put at 485 um, at the moment. So uh, pushing up slightly, we've got the RSI kind of normalized a little bit and the MACD also showing signs of some momentum back higher, uh, but resistance is going to be at $485 for Netflix. Uh, talking about Microsoft and Microsoft here, also validating that support a little bit up over 83 basis points. So seeing some momentum come back in at that higher low. And uh, of course, the next resistance is going to be all the way up here at closer to $384 per share. So this is going to be that higher high uh, and that higher low to watch for Microsoft still within the context of a very strong uptrend um, at the moment. Uh, talking about end phase now and end phase on the day was, I believe, down a little bit over 3.6%, so back under $100. Uh, it's a very clear resistance where it's getting rejected at, so it's not a surprise that this right here is a resistance level where we previously have found support and now we're finding a resistance 
at these levels. And of course, the RSI MACD was incredibly overbought. The stock had rallied over 50%. So it's a very normal thing to see the price action pull back a little bit over, uh, you know, 8 to 10% revalidate and find that support again at $92 before making a move back higher. Uh, once again, to break out above $108, $110 per share for end phase. And finally, we arrive at Costco at an all-time high, over 90 basis points, extremely overbought, overextended with the RSI and the MACD as well. Uh, and of course, support level is going to stay put down to $603 per share for Costco moving forward. So, Tomorrow, very, very big day with respect to the FOMC meeting. That is really what's going to be on the agenda for tomorrow. I'll be live to cover that. And of course, today's inflation numbers came in a little bit in line with expectations, a slightly higher on a month over month basis. Uh, so overall, the markets are still very optimistic with that soft landing scenario and that narrative that the Federal Reserve is indeed going to pause. Interest rates are not going to raise anymore. And of course, four to five cuts priced in going into 2024. So tomorrow, summary of economic projections, very, very important. I'll be doing another video prior to the numbers coming out to kind of go over what the expectations might look like. As always, if you enjoyed this video, find it helpful, make sure that you drop a like. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Members only private videos with over 40 plus uh, tutorials and lectures available with access to all the spreadsheets, intrinsic values, and of course, Discord access with all the trade alerts also available with the link down below. And uh, as always, happy investing. I'll see you all in the next video.